Well, hello, everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute. I sure missed you guys and gals over the last couple of days. First days since we um, I started doing these minutes that I hadn't released these during the day, they've actually become part of my normal routine. Last couple of days, I didn't get to make one. I was having phone problems out in, uh, down the hill country, and the uh, uh, signal wasn't great, and I was having something going on with this with this phone. and. You know, I'm, I'm so proud of myself. My patience is so much better as I've aged and grown in the Lord. I didn't bounce this thing off a set of rocks. Because I, sure, I sure thought about it. But anyway, I was able to, you know, uh, temper back my temper, so to speak. But I miss getting these things out to you. Um, the one that went out yesterday is the one that I recorded on Tuesday. So be sure and catch it because we've really taken Tuesdays and really talking about how do we grow in our being, a you know, our personal work uh, towards lost souls and uh uh, there, there, there's some, good, there's some, I think some good stuff there. Not cause I said it just because it's a, uh, one of the, 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 the primary draw to people to Christ, I believe is the love of God and God wanting us. He's able to save us and he wants to save us. And, uh, but I was down there, we went down there to get a little rest and, uh, uh, but to work on really <clears throat> the big questions, you know, when are we opening up? How are we going to open up? What's it going to look like? You know, are we going to be able to? Y'all keep praying and holding. I know you are, but uh, thank God these uh, some of these COVID-19 uh, new case numbers are kind of we're going down as I'm, I'm saying this right now. Dallas had its lowest new case day uh, as a county. And Kaufman County, they ain't had a great week, but it's it's at least not been worse than the weeks, you know, before. And, uh, you know, we just needed to go down. There's lots of, you know, questions we got to have good answers to, uh, not just starting back church services together but 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 victory prep uh having them little kids uh here and you know watching out for them making sure everything's done as best we can um and um you know one thing i guarantee i won't do is i am not going to experiment around with and 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 put our kids in danger i've i've said from the start of this thing it's COVID-19 thing is not, once it became evident, it wasn't as fatal in children. It's still not a good thing for them to get. I mean, if you if you keep up with what's going on, the research and things around it, you know that, uh, you know, that the, uh, there, the, I read a study, was it this morning, last night? I think it was last night. I, I got on into it and finished kind of studying on it this morning, but, you know, they, there's one study out that says that 73% of all these, uh, these children going to the hospital with uh, this MIS-C, it's kind of like an auto-inflammatory type disease. It's been fatal in some of them, cause aneurysm, some of them getting on ventilators. 73% of these children that are going in, it's kind of like a like Kawasaki's disease, if you're kind of familiar with that, but it's not the same. But um, I think it was 73% of the children going to the hospitals with this have had COVID in the last two weeks. So, you know, we, we just can't just well, we're tired of it, so it's gone away. And, you know, I listen to some of these politicians talk. I am think, good grief, man, these people went to school. Lord, I didn't even go to college, and I got better sense than that. But <laughs> Having better sense than a politician don't mean nothing, boys and girls. But anyhow, uh, so uh, it's something we're watching and praying a lot about. And uh, I, was, uh, I was thinking about this minute and uh, let you boys and girls in on something I'm really targeting. Uh, and the leadership, we're really starting to look around, can we do August, the weekend of August 15th and 16th? And that's what we're really praying towards. Uh, school's supposed to start on 13th, and then 15th and 16th would be it. And I probably shouldn't, I don't want to put out, if every time I put out dates, people lock in and go, that's what we're doing. Well, you know, I mean, that's what we're praying towards, and God will let us see. But uh, I was thinking of a verse, really what I was wanting y'all to be praying, of course, praying about these things. And um, and I was thinking about where, where the Lord said, uh, take heed, watch and pray. If you don't know what the hour is. You don't know when the hour is. He was talking, of course, about the second coming, which is always a place we need to be in. Uh, but, but some things in life we don't know about. I was talking with Francois Norcilius this week, our great missionary brother in Haiti. And uh, he'd come up here to the States. They're, they're about to be headed back. It's COVID-19 is not being kind to uh, the poor people of Haiti. And um, uh, so, you know, they just don't have resources we got there. Um, but uh, we were talking and he, you know, the church is shut down there and all that kind of stuff. And he said, you know, but the Lord, the Lord knows where we are and he knows when the time is. 
that we can do something different. The Lord knows that time, and he knows it in, in us, and we're just going to keep working, you know. We're going to keep praying like it's all up to God and working like it's all up to us, and the Lord will meet us in the middle of it. But uh, uh, but the first words Jesus said in that verse is, take heed, you know, or be ready. Be ready. Uh, stay ready. Being and staying ready is hard, isn't it? Uh, I have stopped and started, stop starting church back up so many times in my mind, uh, so many days that we've said, so many thoughts that we've had. And I think God is, I think God is still trying to get something across. Uh, one thing is I'll guarantee you, when we open back up church, we'll, we'll be different. There's things we're going to do different. Uh, there's things we've learned. There's, there's a reality of this virtual world that we're going to continue to engage in. Uh, I'm going to, uh, when we get started back up, I'm going to put out a deal every week of me preaching through uh, one of the books of the Bible, <clears throat> either preaching through it or I may just talk through it, almost like we used to do the uh, uh, Bible reading, and uh, that I'm just going to put out virtually, go out every week, and just be there for you, you know, help you if, if it will, you know, great. If not, you can turn it off. But uh, but things like that, even how I'm pastoring is going to be different. Uh, uh, one of the things the Lord has let me see during this time is that as I did not have as many different administrative things I had to do, I was able to spend more time in prayer and study. And frankly, that's what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. The apostle said, you know, y'all y'all take weight to tables, and uh, we're going to give our we're not going to step away from from prayer and study. That's really what I need to be doing for you. So anyway, I'm rambling. I know, but. Um, but we're going to be doing some things different, and, and God's getting us ready for them, and we need to stay ready, um, and 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 us be getting ready. And you know, it's hard. Like I give you some dates, and we, we you know, if we get up on them, and COVID goes right back up through the roof, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I mean, I will not. You hear me? I will not take your health, and I don't care what it costs us as a church. We will not be frivolous. With the, with the lives, especially of our old and our young. And we're just not going to do it. And I don't care if we go bankrupt. I don't care if I go bankrupt. It, that, that's immaterial. We will not uh, do things that are outside of, of the wisdom that God gives us, you know. And uh, you say, well, you know, a lot of y'all have learned there's a different way of doing church, isn't there? There's things you thought you was important to church that, frankly, you found out were just selfish. Ain't that something? We've all learned some stuff. And so uh, God will God take care of it. But uh, but we've got to stay ready. It's so hard. Um, I was thinking about, you know, the worst baseball I think I ever played. <clears throat> Never mind. If you'd saw me play baseball, you'd say, Todd, did you ever have a good day? Let me put it this way. The worst days my teams ever had was after rain delays. It's hard to get up for something in it rain for two hours and then sitting on the bus and coming out and what happens you know you go out there and you commit five errors in the first inning because you're not ready right pitcher throws his arm out because why he, he he got warmed up and then he he just really wasn't that ready you know they, they say okay we're gonna start warming up well it might start raining you don't really put your whole heart into it next thing you know you done tweak your elbow they say on the d-day you know if you if you know your history uh the great uh, Normandy invasion there in 1944 uh, was actually scheduled for the day before, but they had to postpone it because of the weather. And uh, it was men on boats and, and, and the, you know, and the airplanes and everything, and everybody's ready to go. They had to delay it. The overriding attitude towards that delay was negative. From the private all the way to the generals, everybody was so ready they were so ready that you'd think, oh, thank God, you know, I got another day, maybe a living. A lot of men died in the next few days after that. But they were ready, ready, ready to go. And I know a lot of y'all, you've been ready to go for a good long while. What I want you to do is really hold on to it. So how do we do it? Well, watch and pray. Jesus said, take heed. Watch and pray. Get, let your mind be on something eternal. Watch. Watch for the second coming. I'm going to tell you something, all you boys and girls out there, all you Christian brothers and sisters. If you don't have your eyes on the skies right now, in 2020, with all this nonsense we're looking at in this world, then you ain't got a clue of what the signs of the second coming are anyway. Okay? And if y'all know Brother Todd, you know I ain't one. I don't get. I don't have a heart attack every time Prime Minister of Israel hiccups. You, you know, I'm just not that way. 
But I'm telling you right now, it is just like what the Lord said. If we, like I say, we are definitely coming in times of Antichrist. Now, that's just all there is to it. And so you you better be watchful, okay? Uh, but the, but even even with put your mind on eternal things, it's so easy. To, we got so scrambled around. You know, summer we get scrambled around anyway. You know, I always say I don't mind people going on vacation if they don't if they don't take off church for three months, right? What happens? You take two weeks off, and because it really wasn't a, the priority it needed to be in any way, it drifts out of your mind, out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind, and uh, <clears throat> you know you're not doing it. One of the hardest things they've had all these I've heard coaches all over the state talking about, you know, as they're trying to get the kids back for off season is one, because you're nervous about the whole situation, but two. Kids hadn't been in school in so long. It's almost like it's it's somewhere else. And you hadn't, we hadn't been in church service in so long. And so it can be somewhere else. It's time to watch. Get it. Start really getting it lined up. Really start praying towards uh, who you're going to be working with. Be praying for your own attitude. Be praying for this to break. Be, be praying for We need to see a bunch of people saved. Praise God. We're seeing people saved through our virtual presence. Lord, help our Spanish uh, uh, speaking ministry. Brother Victor's. Out, we we are trying right now to get everything tied into the website from Brother Jim's to Brother Victor's to everything. We was able to get Saturday nights in there, and uh, but that's all going to be coming. But uh, but our Spanish ministry, Spanish speaking ministry, in the last <coughs> oh I don't know through the summer anyway, uh, virtually and on Zoom, we've had twenty three professions of faith right there. Hey, Amen. Ain't that great? Uh, just 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 in that one little little area. And uh, uh, so be, be praying that, man, we, we need to see everybody coming to church. And we need to have a big, uh, uh, great time of invitation. Man, we just, we've got a lot of seed out. Man, I want to see it. Come. I want to see people get saved. And, um, and we, ought to, we ought to be seeing that. But you got, we got to be ready for it. We can't just let it catch up on us like a bunch of high school kids sitting on the bus. And they say, okay, could jump out, let's play. I mean, we got to be ready to go watch and pray okay because we don't know what the hour is he said brother Todd well how's a good way for me to watch one of the ways that I'm going to leave you with this I know I'm kind of rambling today but uh, right now is the time to really be making sure you're investing in people next week Lord willing middle of next week we're going to announce a, f a final go no go on, on 15th and 16th okay that's when we'll make it official this ain't official okay I'm going to say this right now for my own mama's sake. Okay, Mimi, I'm not setting a date. Because <laughs> she'll hear that and that'll be it. She's already called three people and said, we're, as soon as she heard this, we're having church 15th, 16th August. But that's just Mimi. Anyway, uh, I better, I about ought to delete this one. But anyhow, the, uh, uh, but this is a good time, a week or so here before we know exactly on a date, to really be investing in the people that you've been praying for, those four people. Do something for them. Do something with them. Make sure you don't even have to be connected to inviting them to church, but just make sure you're 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 connected. I'm gonna tell you something. I just don't listen to people much that I don't know. Somebody, I got to kind of walk with somebody, and then before I trust anything they got to say. And I and one of the things that Christians people ought to see in Christians is a servant. They ought, they ought to see genuine love. Remember what Jesus said, people will know you're, you're my disciples when you love one another. Not when you know your Bible. Not when you know the 66 books of the Bible in John 3, 16. But when you love each other. When you, the heartbeat behind serving somebody is loving them. And so invest in them in love. Watch and pray. We don't know when the hour is. Well, I can't wait to get to see you guys this weekend. Now, I'm not preaching this weekend, okay? Uh, I was gone during recording time, and Mason is uh, is going to be preaching the Saturday night service. The same sermon will be out for the Sunday morning deals. But the good thing about that is, frankly, out there in Internet land, we've had more people watching him than we have watching me. He, somebody asked me the other day, said, Brother Ty, does that hurt your feelings? I said, let me tell you something. Ain't nothing I want to see better, number one, than my own child excel me. But number two, what I want to see is our new generation rise up to the point that we, us older folks, have worked ourselves right out of a job. That's my goal. I want to leave something behind that matters. And I think it's happening. 
I can't wait to be a part of it. I can't wait for us to be able to run together in it. Can't wait to see you. Hope you have a great day and a good weekend. Bye-bye.